let's go. It is December the 10th, 2017. So the Buccaneers, my beloved Buccaneers, lost another game today. Um, I won't pretend that I watched this game because I didn't. I have not watched a game since the Buffalo Bills game this year. And I really, you know, I could go into that and I could make a whole video on why, uh, why I have stopped watching specifically the Buccaneers, not necessarily the NFL in general, but specifically the Buccaneers. And then kind of just how it's affected me, how it's made me feel, um, what I've noticed over the last, you know, now month and a half, uh, however long it's been, and uh, and get into all that. But but for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna talk about Jameis Winston and Dirk Cutter, and what direction this organization is gonna go now. Usually when there's smoke, there's fire. Reports came out this morning. Ian Rappaport comes out making a comment about uh, Jameis Winston and Dirk Cutter are having some differences. They're squabbling about some stuff. Um, I will tell you this much. I am a huge Jameis Winston fan. I am I'm beyond your normal fanboy when it comes to Jameis Winston. And I've had to kind of put myself in check. I really have because I love Jameis Winston. And I get in arguments with people about Jameis Winston. Um, I had a co-worker that said he was a poor man's Cam Newton. And I about lost my mind. I live here in Charlotte. So um, I about lost my mind because I was defending Jameis Winston. And and I had to kind of stop myself at some point and be like, why? why again, why am I defending this guy like... I have no personal ties to him. But nevertheless, I'm just giving you a kind of a background on me so you understand as I'm talking right now, I'm coming from a standpoint of somebody who loves Jameis Winston. I love the Seminoles. I love Jameis Winston. When he was drafted by the Bucks, I mean, that was like the ultimate for me, right? To be a Seminole fan, to be a Bucks fan, to have my favorite Seminole quarterback other than Charlie Ward come to the Tampa Bay Bucks. Um, that was huge. That was just like, it doesn't get any better than that. I thought he was the second coming of, you know, whatever, and that he was going to take this team to the promised land. Jameis Winston could do no wrong. I saw him through rose-colored glasses. I probably still do to a certain extent. Now, I've tried to get better at seeing him, you know, and, and, and understanding what he is and, and that he's not perfect. Um, but... As an organization, you've invested a lot here. You've invested now. This is his third year. Obviously, you drafted him with the number one overall pick. You did a lot of research, a lot of background. Your GM's job is on the line when it comes to this kid because he chose him. He went with him. The head coach, though, he was not the head coach when they drafted Jameis Winston. Lovey Smith was the head coach when they drafted Jameis Winston. And I don't know that that Dirk Cutter has that same love for Jameis Winston as Lovey Smith might have actually had for him. I mean, Lovey Smith, when you heard him talk about Jameis Winston, like he lit up, like he lit up like that was his own son sometimes. I wasn't a huge Lovey Smith fan, but I'm just saying he wanted Jameis Winston. That was obvious. So this organization, what direction are they going to go here? I mean, if, if, if there are issues here, <clears throat> what direction are you going to go? To me personally, I feel like Dirk Cutter's offense is super predictable. I remember earlier this year when they played the Patriots on Thursday night. I'm listening to the pregame, and Tony Romo was talking about the defense that the Patriots had been running and why it had been unsuccessful and how we should expect them to do something completely different. I honestly cannot remember exactly what it was. I don't remember if they were playing man and then they went zone or if they were playing zone and then they went man. But either way, I remember the press conferences that entire week leading up to it and hearing Mike Evans, Jameis Winston, Dirk Cutter, um, I, all of everyone on the offensive side of the ball talking about what they expected the Patriots to run because that's what they always run. 
And guess what? Tony Romo was right. They switched it up for that game. And they did not run the same style defense that they did all year long. That At that point in the year, if you can remember, they were not playing good defense. They got blown up on, you know, by the, the Panthers scored like 30-something points on them. They had given up like 300-yard passing by a quarterback like for like four or five weeks in a row. Something ridiculous like that. My whole point in bringing that up is that at some point during the game, you've got to see that they're doing something different on defense and then change it up. You've got to be able to switch it up at some point. And they 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 just can't make adjustments. They have not made any adjustments. And to me, that is a sign of a great coach. When you can go into halftime or after the first quarter or, or at whatever point you can make adjustments, in-game adjustments, that's huge. Because they, a team may come out and do something completely different that you weren't expecting. But if you just keep doing the same thing over and over and over again, and you don't make those adjustments, then what's ever going to change? The other reason why I bring that point up is because Dirk Cutter is calling the offensive plays from the sideline. I've watched him in post-game press conferences where they ask him, oh, so what did you think about this play or that play? Or what do you think about this look or that look? And he says, well, I don't know. After I watch the game film tonight, I'll be able to give you tomorrow uh, in Monday's press conference, I'll be able to give you a better answer. Wait, what? I'm sorry, but if you don't know what was going on and you can't see, then how are you supposed to make in-game adjustments? Now, I know specific plays, I get it, and I'm sure there's somebody talking in a headset and giving them information from up top, but I'm telling you, I'm a visual person. If you're not seeing it yourself, I just don't know how you're making that adjustment. I, I don't. And I know they got their laptops. They got all this, you know, the tablets and everything on the sideline now, but I don't know. So ultimately, for me, at the end of the day, I blame a lot of this on him, a lot of this on the play calling. Obviously, I think Jameis Winston has to take some responsibility. The offensive line, which we were hoping was going to come together, which I don't know why we did. I guess I thought with Ali Marpet moving to center, you know, and some of the moves that they made across the offensive line, getting J.R. Sweezy back this year, I thought that that was going to play out well, but it didn't. It just did not pan out to to what we thought it was going to happen, you know. Or maybe a lot of guys knew what was going to happen. Because if you watch the offensive line last year, it was atrocious. Zero run game, bad offensive line, did not protect the quarterback, and that's what happened. This is, that's your formula for losing right there. So what are they going to do? Are you going to chop another coach down? I mean, how many years? We're, we're going to be like the Cleveland Browns pretty soon because you're going to get rid of this coach now, and then what are you going to do? People talking about bringing Gruden back. I love Gruden. I'm a huge Gruden guy. But I don't know. I don't know about that. I mean, at this point, like, you're going to have to do something special to get fans in Tampa excited again. Because the last time I went down to Tampa, now this was right This was right after they drafted Jameis. But I remember going down to Tampa, people were more excited about the Lightning down there than they were about the Bugs. By far. By far. It wasn't even close. So, I don't know. We'll see. I don't know what's going to happen. Um... This is kind of a little bit of a long rant. I don't know. I may follow up on this and talk some more bucks. But anyways, I'm going to keep grinding, keep moving forward. Always going to trust the process. Subscribe, like, and leave a comment. Tell me what you think. Oh, well. I'm out. All right, so I wanted to add on a little bit to this video here and just kind of show the body language between Dirk Cutter and Jameis Winston when they are asked pretty much the same question. So I apologize for the ghetto setup here, but uh, it is what it is. So let's listen to Dirk Cutter's reaction when he's asked about this. The National Report came out this morning uh, suggesting you and uh, Jameis were not seeing eye to eye on uh, several issues. Uh, Dirk, uh, are you aware of the report? And uh, from your standpoint, any, any truth at all to it? They told me about it after the game. and. Uh, you know, that's obviously news to me. I think uh, Jameis and I have an extremely consistent relationship for the last three years, and I don't, I don't think anything's, anything's different about it, but that's just my opinion. 
Does it, does it concern you, though, Dirk, that something comes out like that? And the presumptions, which you don't like to make, but most of the time it comes out from someone within his camp. And you want that out. Does that, does that concern you? Well, it concerns me that, that uh, we're not winning enough games. That, that's my biggest concern. I mean, I, I know the truth about our relationship, but, uh, you know, my, my big concern is our, our football team. The report also said that it suggested that maybe you didn't have his back enough while he was recovering from the injury. Uh, I mean, you stood up in front of us and said he wasn't going to lose his job as a starter, or in most cases that's not going to happen. Um, I mean, is there anything you felt like you could have done differently to perhaps lend more support to him in that situation? Could have whipped out my medicine bag and done quick shoulder surgery and fixed him up, but I wasn't able to do that. All right. Now, I paused it right there because that was Jenna Lane that was asking him that question. She's a reporter who works for ESPN and uh, does a lot of the, the Buccaneers stuff. So he he gets easily aggravated with Jenna Lane. Um, the more press conferences you'll see with uh, with him, she's the one that sometimes tends to trigger him a little bit. So I don't know that he's necessarily frustrated specifically with Jameis Winston in this particular case or the report about that. Sometimes it's just that she asks some pretty stupid questions and it tends to irritate him. In this particular case, I don't know that the question was necessarily, you know, stupid or, or off, but uh, I'm just giving you a little background as to the body language you're seeing from him. Uh, maybe more so directed at Jenna Lane and not so much the situation. Although I could be wrong, um, but just based off of what I saw and how he answered the previous question, he seemed like he was pretty straightforward on that one. Um, I didn't really see a lot there. Um, we'll get into the Jameis Winston one. And now Jameis. Jameis, there was a before the game uh, in Rappaport from NFL Network had a report that said that um, you and Dirk Cutter weren't seeing eye to eye on a few things. One, that he didn't have your back while you were playing hurt, and two, that you didn't like the offense. It was too predictable. Can you comment on that report? Yeah, uh, listen, me and, me and Coach Cutter have a great relationship, first and foremost. And we got the same goal when we go out there on that football field, and that's to win the football game. So. It doesn't matter what anybody else can possibly say. Uh, obviously, a lot of stuff can, can come out uh, when we're not doing uh, as, as expected. Now, the way that he just answered that, the way that he just said a lot of things can come out when they're not doing so well, just leads me to believe that this came from within the organization. Somebody else, maybe somebody within the organization is not happy. Now, who knows? Right now, when a team is playing this miserable, when they're when they're just right not doing well with the expectations that they had, and if you watched a lot of the press conferences, a lot of the player interviews prior to this season started, a lot of the players had really bought into the hype. They bought it. They were drinking that Kool Aid. So you got to imagine there's some players right now that are pretty fired up. They mad. They are not happy with the way that this season went because they were expecting to get to the playoffs this year. They were drinking the Kool-Aid. But, uh, but that's false, okay? Uh, Coach Cutter coaches his tail off, uh, and he definitely supports me. So uh, whatever anybody else got to say outside of that, you know, I, it's, you can just push that. That's water up under a bridge, man. That's, that's water up under a bridge. Generally, whenever somebody uses that phrase, generally, it's over and done with, right? doesn't mean that it never happened it just means that it's over and done with they resolved the situation which i'm sure they did if they did get into any type of squabble i'm sure james is smart dirt cutter smart they got over it but nevertheless it doesn't mean it didn't happen that's that's shocking james does it concern you at all though when, when something like that comes out hey it's a presumption that comes out of hey, your camp or be Somebody within the organization. Yeah. A, a is a, it's a distraction, okay? And a lot of distractions come up when uh, when we don't perform like we, we need to perform. I'm a type of player, uh, first and foremost, my I'm a strong believer in coaches coach and players play. Uh, if you look at today's game, 
the players we I didn't play. I didn't play. I had three turnovers. Okay, and a predictable call or any any call doesn't. You can't predict that. Okay, when you have three turnovers, you you can't make that up. How frustrating was it for you guys as an offense with so much talent to turn the ball over five times today? Uh, it, talent doesn't have to do anything with turning the ball over. It's, it's frust- it was frustrating because we they couldn't stop us. We drove the ball up and down the field. We stopped ourselves, and uh, and that was the first frustrating part uh, with that whole that whole thing. Can you take us through the turnovers? I mean, the first one, Deshaun. I don't know if he came back to the ball or, or what you saw there. Uh, Twenty-three made a great play. All right. So we, the rest of this press conference is really not going to be on this. The female again. That was Jenna Lane. And about ninety-seven percent of the time, I don't know. Maybe actually more than that. When you hear a female. Talking to a Bucks player, it's gonna be Jenna Lane, um, unless they're doing very well, or like at the beginning of the year when Hard Knox was at training camp, there were some other female reporters. But Jenna Lane is pretty much the only female reporter uh, handling the Buccaneers, and she just she rubs some of these guys just the wrong way. Um, she she and, and it's taken nothing away from her, you know. I'm sure she's a great person, but man. Um, I don't know. It's sometimes it's a little frustrating, and you can see it from the players whenever they're answering questions from her. Um, interestingly enough, though, in this particular game, after this game, uh, just listening to the interviews, like I said, I did not watch the game. But what is Jameis Winston gonna complain about as far as the coaching? Right? He turned the ball over three times. The offense turned it over five times. They moved the ball up and down the field perfectly fine. Um, he he can't say anything about the coach in this particular case. And, you know, his response is evident of that. But nevertheless, uh, I just wanted to post this uh, and add it on to the end of that other video because I found it to be interesting and, uh, and just kind of uh, what I enjoy about watching these press conferences, the things that I look at when I'm watching these press conferences. Uh, some people may not necessarily see it the way that I see it, but it's kind of how I look at it. And uh, so I just figured I would share that aspect. It may be something I do in the future. I would definitely like to be able to do it with a little more uh, professional capability and have it look better instead of propping up my phone and recording off of my iPad here. But it is what it is. So uh, I'm going to leave it at that. But... Uh, just uh, very interesting. So my personal opinion, at some point there was a squabble. At some point they got over it. And at some point, somebody else had loose lips. You know what they say, loose lips sink ships. I am out.